Mauritius, a paradise island in the Indian Ocean, best known as a tourist destination. Despite its size and 1.29 million inhabitants, Mauritius quickly emerged as one of Africa's giants. From an economy based on agriculture, the island has successfully transformed itself into a robust and diversified economy and is today a preferred destination for global financial entities. To regulate this buzzing business environment, several institutions stand as sentinels. The Bank of Mauritius, the Financial Services Commission and the Financial Intelligence Unit, among others. To strengthen the rule of law, Mauritius has always proactively set up laws and adhered to international conventions. In December 2003, Mauritius signed the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC, which came into force in 2005. However, the fight against corruption started before that. In 2002, the Independent Commission Against Corruption, ICAC, was set up. The ICAC was created in 2002 after the passing of the Prevention of Corruption Act, which in fact mandates us to lead the national fight against corruption. Under the Prevention of Corruption Act, we fight it under three pronged that is prevention, education and investigation, which includes also prosecution. Since 2006, our approach has changed into more practical and realistic strategies. After 10 years of activity, the ICAC has today garnered international recognition. The United States is very proud of its long history of working with ICAC. We think that the work of, of ICAC is very important. The United Nations system in Mauritius views the Independent Commission Against Corruption as an important strategic ally. We first cooperated in 2003 on a national corruption survey. We lastly cooperated in 2012 on a forensic financial training. One of the main reasons behind the international recognition of ICAC is its independence. Well, ICAC by itself is independent. That is why it works under the Parliamentary Committee, which is an emanation of Parliament itself. ICAC is very impartial in whatever it does. As Chairman of the Parliamentary Committee, I must tell you that I'm very proud. Over a period of six years, ICAC has proved itself the number of cases that we are getting today is proof of what I'm telling you. Today, the ICAC boasts figures that rank it among the top anti-corruption agencies in the world. In June 2012, the ICAC was awarded the first prize of the United Nations Public Service Award in the Prevention and Fight Against Corruption category. A few months later, during a conference in Jakarta in November 2012, the UNODC and the UNDP hailed Mauritius and five other countries among 150 to have successfully contributed to controlling corruption in their respective countries. The tangible efforts of the ICAC reflect the achievements of Mauritius, which ranks among the best in Africa in business and governance indicators. To achieve this, the ICAC has re-engineered its three-pronged approach since 2006, namely investigation, education and prevention. The investigation and prosecution process follows a comprehensive sequence. When a complaint is received, either in person, in writing, by phone or from the Commission's own initiative, a first information report FIR, is opened. The board considers the FIR and, if the narrative appears to relate to a section of the POCA or the FIAMLA, decides if a preliminary investigation PI, should be initiated. The FIR is allocated to a relevant officer who has 21 days to complete the investigation in a corruption case and 14 days for money laundering cases. Investigators of the ICAC rely on expertise gained from training by the FBI, Serious Fraud Office and Interpol. 
We signed an MOU in 2007 in order to provide technical assistance in the area of financial investigations, training prosecutors and investigators, and assort the, the various best practices. Most recently, ICAC had requested uh, more training in the area of cyber accounting and with help to establish a forensics lab that included the, the cyber capability. When the preliminary investigation is complete, it is again sent to the board. If elements point to a, an offence under the POCA or the FIAMLA, a further inquiry, FI, is initiated under the supervision of the Director General. At this stage, the investigating officer is advised by the Director and Assistant Director of Investigation and the Chief Legal Advisor. If the FI is deemed complete, it is transferred to the Prosecution Unit, who in turn submits the file to the Director of Public Prosecution with a report from the Director General. After an investigation is over at the level of the ICAC, the ICAC sends the file to the DPP's office for advice with appropriate recommendations. The DPP can approve the recommendations or disapprove the recommendations, or thirdly, the DPP can simply order for further inquiry. Under Section 82 of the POCA, no prosecutions can be instituted except with the consent of the DPP, who enjoys constitutional independence. Once the case is lodged by the DPP, the prosecution unit follows the case in court until completion. While the core of the ICAC's mandate concerns investigation of corruption and money laundering cases, educating the population and preventing corruption are also important aspects. The ICAC's education and prevention strategy is organized along five R's. Recognize, reject, resist, report and reinforce. Through a thorough exercise of audience segmentation and targeting, activities and materials are designed to raise public awareness on the scourge that is corruption. Additionally, the key achievements of the ICAC in education and prevention remain the elaboration of CPRs and the public sector anti-corruption framework. After 10 years of existence, the achievements of the ICAC in the fight against corruption is commendable. However, the next step towards the eradication of corruption presents many challenges ahead. Most recently in February 2013, there was national consultations undertaken to try to understand the important themes for Mauritius following the Millennium Development Goals. Out of this, governance came up very highly, and in particular inside of governments, accountability, transparency and anti-corruption. As head of the civil service, I have made an appeal to all heads of ministry and departments to extend the full support and collaboration to ICAC for the implementation of the public sector anti-corruption framework. ICAC is a very welcome addition to the Mauritian institutions and the United States is very pleased to have been able to help and looks forward to continuing working with ICAC in the future. Corruption being very dynamic, we need to enhance all our parameters of the laws and strategies to make the fight better. And if the laws are not enhanced, I believe we'll remain at crossroads. This fight needs to be gained through doing it without fear and favor.